Hi, folks, and welcome to The Legacy, a new program by the Washington football team. I'm excited about it because having been a part of some of our story's history as a former Super Bowl champion, I could not wait to be a part of this new breed. That's what we were called back in the day as the Washington football team moves forward, new direction, a new vision, but with the same burgundy and gold style. And so I'm honored to be a part of this and to bring in some of our past and some of our present gladiators that have worn the burgundy and gold. And I couldn't figure a better way to start this thing off with the parallels of the 1981 team, 39 years ago, a man named Joe Jackson Gibbs. Not everyone in football circles knew of him. And we were like a band of misfits. And we all came together. And we lost our first five games. Now, most of you know the end of the story. But some of you youngins that may not, we got hit in the face with adversity. And it hurt. But we never gave up. And uh, our first guest for this program is Mike Nelms. And Mike Nelms was the most prolific returner and best player we had on our football team, in my opinion, in 1981. The Jacobis, the Bossicks, the Starks, um, the Mays, you name them, the Hogs, Donnie Warren and company. All these guys were there, but we didn't get the, we didn't know each other yet. So Michael, what do you remember so much about coming to Old Redskins Park in Herndon back in the day and looking at that group in that locker room? Thanks, thanks for having me, Doc. Um, when you talk about what they may be experiencing right now, what I remember was driving to uh, Redskin and Park and seeing all that stuff written on the ground. Remember all that stuff? They paint that stuff on the ground. I yeah. mean, goodness, they, they were somewhat uh, displeased with us. Uh, and they made it apparent when they uh, started writing and scribbling stuff all on the ground. So yes, when you sure. park, yeah, you, know, you read their uh, their minds. Yeah, we were not embraced per se, but there was a spirit about us. And Joe Gibbs, I didn't know who Joe was upon meeting him. As a matter of fact, he was my fifth head coach in five years. So that's uh, why I'm so upbeat about Ron Rivera's group because they actually hit the ground running and they won their first game, Mike. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and nice. I mean, it, it, it beat Philly, man. When Gibbs came here, uh, I remember him saying, uh, one thing we will not put up with was uh, dissension and finger pointing. And, you know, you hear that, but, you know, you, you kind of take it with a grain of salt because some coaches say this and say that. And then uh, we had an individual that was, that had made all pro a few times. And he went to pointing fingers. The next thing you know, his locker was empty. And it was like, ooh, ooh. Ooh, it, it was real. He, he, he wasn't, uh, he didn't pull any punches. And so, yeah, I, I, that was one, one of the things I, I remember about Joe Gibbs that straight off the bat. When Joe Gibbs became the Redskins head coach in 1981, he knew the bottom line evidence on which he'd be judged. Your successes in this league are marked in wins, and I think we're going to have to uh, win to be successful. And I would be kidding uh, anybody if I said anything differently. So if I screw this up, it's going to be uh, me doing it. <laughs> yeah, but Mike, Mike, you were not nice. Because some of the hits you put on us in practice were not fair. It just wasn't fair. Listen, I, I believe when you play, you play. You know, if, I, if, I, if you catch me not playing, I'm sitting down. But when I'm on the field, <laughs> It's live, and, and I'm always like that. I mean, it's just you know, I don't, I don't have them. I'm all no. enough. I decided not to fair catch after um, George Michaels uh, criticized me after a game. I, I, I was on the ten yard line. I tried to slide sideways, and I said, "Okay, I'll fair catch." And I fair caught. I had backed up about four yards, so I, when I fair caught it, I was on the six. And he walked, yeah, and he really criticized, lit into me. Mm -hmm. And I, I got upset at first, and I said, wait a minute, let me look at this. And I, and I asked myself, why do you for a catch? I said, because that's what, that's what everybody, I mean, that's what they do. 
So why do you fry catch? I didn't have an answer. I mean, why do I fry catch? Because everyone else does. Mm. Well, does it make sense for me? No. I'm not afraid of getting hit. I don't mind contact. I think I can catch the ball, and I think I can still get yards when others can't. So I decided Psh, I'm not fry catching anymore because there's no, re no, need, no need to. And they'll get tired of running down all the time. The best team has a great sense of family. The best family has a great culture. And within that culture, there is great character. When you have all those elements come together, you've got a team. COVID changed everything. More demands on students, parents, educators. But there was a $4 billion education shortfall in Maryland even before COVID. We have a lot to do for our kids. Close the digital divide, provide opportunities to pursue vocational and technical education, and hire more qualified teachers. Question two will put millions into Maryland schools using revenue from sports betting. I know it won't solve every problem, but a yes vote will help our Maryland schools. This fall, if you're looking for an adventure, find it in the new Honda, like the turbocharged Accord, the turbocharged all-wheel drive CRV, and the all-wheel drive HRV with great features like second row magic seats. It's time to explore and say hello to the open road. Don't miss your chance to get a great deal on your favorite Honda model. When it comes to the best value, Honda leaves the others in the dust. See your local Honda dealer and start your adventure today. Could you imagine going through what the Washington football team has had to go through in this pandemic? No OTA. Imagine having no, you, you're on Zoom. You're doing what we're doing now. That's the only way. I don't get to meet Mike now. I don't get to be in a locker room with you or a lunch room with you. I'm on Zoom. And that's why for these guys to be as courageous as they've shown me in these upcoming, these weeks, they may not have won the game, but the effort, and I can see the talent is there. Mike, I think this team, I think they're better than we were talent-wise. Yeah, a, a lot of people were. A lot of people were, but it, it, it's, it's a team sport. Um, I, I, I got excited that first week. You remember, I used to I hold your horses now. I'm told you, yeah. and I don't, I don't do that easily. Yeah. I mean, what that defense did is stupid. And, and what I see as potential on that offense is really, really nice. I don't know what teens can do. I haven't seen anything on the teens other than the punter. Yeah. I mean, this dude is yeah. off the charts. But uh, if, if they play hungry, man, uh, teens are simple. I mean, you know, if, if it's, you're putting together a meal, I mean, putting together a special teams is like eating pop tarts. I mean, it's simple. You know, it's, it's not a, it's not a menu. Uh, yeah. But just hustle, hustle, grit. We had people that went through the teams that ended up being stars. You, Jacoby, Grimm, uh, Monty Coleman, Mel Kaufman, Neil Okowitz. Man, all you guys ended up starting. But I remember you on the teams. Of course, and you know what? What happens is that, and I always respect Bill Parcells of uh, Giants, is because LT was on, he was like on the up men, on the kickoff return team. They played teams, we played teams. And when I, when you see Lawrence Taylor on special team, well, Monty Coleman was the demon, you know, for us. Charles Mann covered, Dexter yes. Manley, we all covered punts. Yes. And so, and to block for you, and I know this means something. I guarantee you, Ron Rivera's locker room with this team, I hear it now. I don't get a chance to see it, but I hear, I hear it. I block better for you when I really love you. Oh, yeah. And, and I don't want to see nobody hurt you. I thought our team, and this is what this team has got to become, that I think we had. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think our team, because all we socialized together, we didn't have a black-white divide. We didn't have an offense-defense divide. And we certainly didn't have a special team divide. And I think that was our calling card. That was the entree to greatness.
Yeah, yeah that, it was fun, too. I get chill bumps thinking about it. Season long, Redskin special teams answered the call of Coach Wayne Severe. Count them up, and then let's stick the leather to them. Let's go! Right. Return teams cleared the way for Mike Nelms, who set a Redskin career record for punt return yardage in only his third season. These same men also led the entire NFC in covering both kickoffs and punts. Washington special teams were indeed special, and when the NFL strike hit, their unity helped hold the Redskins together. You know, 39 years, man. 39 years ago. I, and I can see Jeff Boston, Joe Jacoby, Mark May, George Stark. I see their faces. You know, I, I, I remember, and that Clarence Harmon, Buddy Hardiman, all these guys, these guys come to my mind, and I think about, you know, Big Day Butts, you know, and, and Tigo. Coleman and you know and when, when I think of the Green Bay Packers I think that our free safety is the president of the Green Bay Packers Earth. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know what I'm saying we, we and that's the thing that I I see it in this team I really do I'm really going to be um impressed in how they develop and you got to go through tough times remember Willie Gall they had to Turn man is a world class sprinter. And Coach Gibbs told us, now be careful, we're not going to kick to him. Remember, mm -hmm. Joe left the room and Wayne would bring us all in the shower. Yes. And Wayne went off. And yes. Wayne said some pretty bad words that we're going to kick him. I'm on that kickoff team. You're on that kickoff team. We go down there. We're going to go around and buy me. I've never seen a human run by me so fast in my life. He scored a touchdown. <laughs> We had a one-yard punt by Joe Thais, our punter, and our leader. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. We had all these things go on, but we won that game, man. And that was the start. You know, Michael, if we don't blow the Buffalo game that year, we go to the playoffs that year. Mm. That's how the team – and then you go from 8-8 eight eight to 12-1, 14-2-10. That was the thrust. And I see that. I can see that with this group. If they don't blow up, if they don't implode. Yeah, if they stay together. They yeah. got to stay together. They need to also not read press clippings. I don't know what they do now. I guess what do they do? Twitter, well, Twitter feeds so, and stuff. Yeah, they, if we didn't have social, we'd have been wrecked. Yeah, With all the personalities we had. They have uh, got to control that. You can't let that control you. But it's the new era now. Yeah. You know, Joe had to go through some hurdles. Him and Gibbs didn't start off harmoniously. Joe had to go to his house and go mm -hmm. man to man with coach. Remember that? Well, I do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of things happened. You know, we had Wilbur Jackson until Big John came in. You know, go, go. We, uh, you know, we had a, yeah, yeah. Harvey, we had a lot of pieces that were different. Phil a, a lot of different pieces. Yeah, a lot of growing pains. Yeah. yeah. And then come back and then we deal with that, uh, with the strike. Oh man. They have the pandemic. We had to strike, yeah. but we got to become a team before the strike. Yeah. They did, yeah. Yeah, losing, losing, losing sucks. Yeah, but I mean, it, it'll check your metal. The best team has a great sense of family. The best family has a great culture, and within that culture, there is great character. When you have all those elements come together, you got a team. COVID changed everything. More demands on students, parents, educators. But there was a $4 billion education shortfall in Maryland even before COVID. We have a lot to do for our kids. Close the digital divide, provide opportunities to pursue vocational and technical education, and hire more qualified teachers. Question two will put millions into Maryland schools using revenue from sports betting. I know it won't solve every problem, but a yes vote will help our Maryland schools.
It's 2020. Let's make a splash. Play the DC Lottery's Roaring Cash. Mike, you look good, man. I didn't know I'm gonna remember saying that a lot. What? Over the 40 years, but yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right so no, you do look good, man. Huh? Do you miss going to games? I, I mean, I miss not being on the sidelines. I miss not being on the sidelines, having fans, and me being a part of that. I miss that. Um, I, yeah. The game miss, day feel, I miss that. I miss the fans, I miss the game day feel. Uh, I don't miss um, a subpar product, but I am definitely um, on the bandwagon with uh, the coaching change and, and the other changes that they've made. And I'm good. And, and he can have, we don't even need to be talking about how long does he have. I don't care. Let's just, as long as we see the, the needle rise, and I'm sure it's going to rise, uh, it, it, we're good. I'm pulling for this organization. And I think we've got a lot of new, and we know what it was like to be new. But we have some support. And it's about supporting them through. And, uh, but, it, but it's, you know, life is rough. It's a winner take all world. Yeah. And so eventually we had to get it done. And I think and they got to get it done. And I sure hope it starts real soon because it's killing me with my bragging rights. Because you know that's the biggest thing about being good, Mike, is that we have bragging rights. Yes, yes. But I need just one thing. Just one thing. Win me two games a year. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. A, Baylor, a former Baylor Bear wants to go back to the great state of Texas and stick his chest out. I get it. Win me two games and we're I good. I would like for them to be able to, to, to step up and, and hit this ball that's, that's going to be thrown to them. Yeah. I just want them to swing at it hard. Swing that's it. At it. Yeah. And keep your eyes open. Thank you. And keep your eyes open. Hey, Mike, it's always a pleasure, man. Having you as our first guest on The Legacy is fantastic and how it ought to be. And we'll keep going, man. Because the one thing about the two of us is that we got a secret, a couple of secrets we need to keep keeping wraps. Because some I'll never tell on you. I'll never tell some of the things you did in that locker room and the guys in those showers. I, you got me for life. I'll never tell. They can't make me tell on you. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We you all were know the best. some of that stuff. You were the best, though. I'm, I'm, you were the I'm, best I'm, prankster ever. I wasn't. I wasn't the only either. You. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. I love you, man. Be hey, good. Love you too, bro. All right, good deal. As Mike Nelms, our uh, kickoff guest on the legacy for the Washington football team. And boy, that's a lot of fun. I can't wait to stack up some guys Joe Jacoby, Mark May, John Riggins, Joe Theismann, just to name a few. And of course, Mr. D, Charles Mann, uh, Dave Butts. We've got a long list to go through, and we thank you so much for being a part of what we're trying to do right here on The Legacy. Until next week, folks, keep it real and keep your eyes on the Burgundy and Gold.